Hello, welcome to the daily drawing. Today we're gonna to be drawing a tiger. So to get started with, we're gonna first draw the body. If you'll notice, it's in a running pose, so the body is very arched at the top. So we're gonna start with just a simple frown. Make sure you leave plenty of space in the front and the back for the head and the tail though. All right, so we're just gonna start with a frown. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a slight wonk. So we're gonna make it smile slightly, not too much. And then once you have that wonk, then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cap that off with a parenthesis for now, like this. And then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and curve that all the way back into the body. So what I would do first is I would do the curve of the thigh in the back, like this, just by doing a parenthesis. And then we want to connect it together with this part, so we're going to do a slight frown. Now uh, make sure that you don't make the tiger too thin, otherwise it'll lose kind of like the uh, large kind of bulk of it. So all I'm doing is I'm doing a slight smile. And then I'm changing that to a uh, slight frown that turns into a smile. So it's a little bit of a wonky line, so a slightly curvy line. If you struggle drawing this shape, another thing that you could do if you have a hard time is uh, draw two circles that are spaced out kind of like this. And then connect those with kind of a frown on both sides. And then that can be an easier way to get this. You might lose a little bit of the um, nuance like this part right here, but that can be an easy way to get you there if you're struggling with just drawing it freehand, okay? And then of course you would erase the two ovals on the inside. So that'll get you a little bit of a wonky beam. So now that we got the body done, we're gonna move on to the head. So we got the head is pretty small. If I measure it compared to my pencil, looks like I could fit one, two, maybe two and a half or three heads. And I also notice that it's gonna line up with the back of the body. So I'm gonna go across from the back of the body and that's where I'm going to draw kind of just like a simple circle for now. We're gonna change it up a little bit here in a minute. So just a simple circle. And then my goal is to connect it to the body. So I'm just going to connect it to the body. So I'm gonna do a slight smile like this or a slight diagonal line. Um, my goal is to connect the top of the head to the back of the body like this. And then I'm gonna do the same thing down here. So about the center, of the head is where I'm going to do a smile to connect it to the bottom of the body right here. You don't want to connect it too high up, otherwise it'll be too thin and it'll look kind of weird. All right, keep the jawline, but you can get rid of this bump right here because it's not super necessary right now. So if you want to erase that as we go, we can. All right, now that I have my head, neck, and body, what I can go ahead and do is I'm going to focus on just the face and then I'm going to come back to the body. All right, so looking at just the head area, what I was just doing is do the muzzle first. Here we can see this is the top of the head, and then it just makes a slight diagonal line, and then we have a very bulky mouth area. So we're just gonna draw kind of a box at the front. So if I start right here, about a little less than, uh, or a little more, yeah, a little less than halfway down the face, I'm just gonna do a slight angle going down. I don't wanna make it too long, otherwise it's gonna look kind of wolfish, and we wanna keep it looking like a tiger. All right, then what I would suggest doing is do a slight curve going down as though you're doing a parenthesis on the front, and then you're just gonna curve that to connect to the bottom of the jaw like this. So it'll connect pretty close to where the neck is starting. So something like this, keep it kind of short. If you notice that it's pretty long and it's looking like a fox, um, push it in a little bit more so it becomes shorter. All right, so now uh, as we're focusing on this muzzle area, we can see that the muzzle is broken down. We have a one curve here that's very small. We have a much, much bigger curve that goes all the way to the back of the jaw. And then of course we have the big curve that makes up the bottom of the mouth. So what I would suggest doing is start right here on the corner, drop it down into a small parenthesis or a small smile like this. Now the reason we're not seeing it full on is because this is almost a profile view, which is why we see so little of that. All right, now on this one, our goal is to meet over here in the corner almost, but a little bit higher up. So I'm just gonna put a little marker dot first right there above where the head met the body, or where the head met the muzzle. And then what I would do is I'm just gonna do an exaggerated smile to connect those two, like this. Now I noticed that my bottom jaw looks way too small right here, so I'm gonna make mine bigger. You might have drawn it accurately the first time, you might not have, just kind of assess it and uh, correct it from there. But notice that the bottom jaw is fairly large. It makes a very round shape that connects back up to that part where the neck met the head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right below the center, go down in a slight smile. And then once you're pretty satisfied with the length down that you have of it, then you're just gonna curve that into the neck area, similar to this, so that we have the curvature of the bottom of the jaw and we have the top jaw. Now, before I move on from the muzzle, I do wanna go ahead and draw the nose. You'll notice that it's just a simple triangle on the front. We can barely see the cheek right there beside the nose. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start at the top 
corner of the muzzle. I'm just going to do a slight diagonal line here going out. Really pay attention to the size of the nose. You don't want to make it too big, but you also don't want to make it too small. Otherwise, it loses that um, look of being a big cat creature. All right. So now that I've got my muzzle, I'm going to check and make sure that everything's how I want it. I do think that I might need to make the forehead come up a little bit because right now in my drawing, it looks like it would be cutting across right here. So I'm going to add a slight bump up for my forehead because I think I drew it a little too small. You may or may not have to do that. So just kind of look at your picture and always, always, always feel free to change things as you're drawing because you might notice that there's something that you can improve on and never be afraid to improve your drawing. All right, so now that I have my head shape, and I have my muzzle. I'm going to go ahead and do, um, if you'll notice that we have a almost like a greater than or less than sign for the cheek here. And it's a little bit of a fluffy texture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down a little bit like this. So that it almost makes kind of like a more exaggerated curve or it's kind of like a, a V that's kind of rounded. And then because this is a fluffy texture, I'm going to go ahead and add a Z line to the edges. All I'm doing is I'm just wiggling my pencil back and forth like this, occasionally just doing tiny lines and making it go in the direction the fur is growing. So I'm just going to add that along that line because that part of their fur is relatively fluffy. All right, now that I have the muzzle and I have the cheek, I can actually go ahead and get rid of this on the inside of the head. And I would suggest get rid of the top edge of the jaw because we're going to have the ear going about that location. All right, so now that I have my head shape and I'm pretty satisfied with the look of it, now what I can do is I can go ahead and do the ear. So if I look at the nose and I go across from it like this, this is going to be about where my ear is going to go is in this general area. So if, it helps if you very lightly draw a diagonal line because your eye is also going to line up with that. So now that I know that my location of the ear is going to be right above the jaw and right on that eye line, I'm going to start with drawing a diagonal line that goes outside the body just a little bit. And then I'm going to curve it down with a slight parenthesis. If you're wanting to make it realistic, you can see that there's like a slightly wonky line on the inside of the ear that you can add if you want to. But if you're just going from more of a cartoon set, you can leave it smooth. I'm going to add that little bitty wonky indent just because I think it looks pretty cool on them. And then, of course, you can erase the inside of the ear after you have it drawn. And then I would suggest drawing a parallel line on the inside like this just to help kind of make it look as though the ear is slightly folded there. And if you choose to do some extra details, you can see the fluff on the inside of the ear. You can just get away with just drawing a simple Z line or drawing a couple diagonal lines to get that kind of fluffy texture on the inner ear. All right, now we can see this other ear. If we go a diagonal line across the face like this, that's lining up with the other ear. So if I very lightly draw a diagonal line, that tells me that this right here is about where my ear needs to go. Now I see that the top of the ear is relatively flat and then this part's really curved. So I'm gonna start with a parenthesis for the curved part of the ear. And then I'm just going to change that parenthesis into a somewhat flat line so that it almost lines up with the back of the head. Now, um, on this one, I don't see the inside of the ear. If you want to add a little bit of texture on the edge, you can. But I do see something very distinctive of tigers is they have like a little white dot on the back of their ear and then the rest of it's kind of black. So if you want to go ahead and do that part, you can. Or you can wait until later. If you choose to color it, you can do that as well too. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do my eye. If I look at it, I can see that the eye is lined up between the ear and the nose. So it's going to be on this line and also another line that you can draw is right there where the muzzle meets the head in this area. If you very lightly draw a line across, that's also going to tell you that that right there is where you're going to put your eyes so that you don't have to second guess yourself. So for the eye shape, it's relatively flat on the top. So I'm going to start with a flat line like this and then I'm just going to add a parenthesis on the side and then I'm going to add a smile on the bottom. They have kind of like um, kind of tilted eyes, which I think looks pretty cool. And they are kind of a little bit more rounded in some areas. And you want to darken in that corner of that, um, uh, like, a teardrop area. And then, of course, we have the pupil on the inside. And I usually like to leave a little white highlight inside the pupil. Now, if you want to, you can kind of barely see it. But there is a little bit of the cheek that sticks out on this side where you can just barely see that little indication of the eye. So if you wanted to stick the cheek out a little bit more and then draw just, like, a little indication of the eye on this side, you can or you can leave it off, that's kind of up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and draw it just to kind of help fill in that face a little bit more. Now, when you're done, you can erase any guidelines that you drew. Now, they look really weird without their stripes and stuff. They look very much like uh, like lions without their stripes. So if you want to go ahead and start doing the stripes now, you can, or you can wait until later. I'm gonna go ahead and wait until later for my stripes. Something I do see that I need to do is I need to lower this muzzle a little bit because it's a little too high up. So I am gonna move this muzzle down just a little bit to make it have that slightly more uh, sagging appearance. 
of the tiger's uh, mouth up here. So you don't have to do that, of course. I'm just doing that because uh, I personally see that that's something that I would want to fix at this point. All right, so now that I have my head done, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the rest of the body and then I'm gonna come back for the stripes later. So if I go out like this, all right. So something that I see that I wanna do first, um, usually my rule of thumb is do the thing that's in the front and then work your way to the back. So I'm gonna do this back leg first. So if I look at the size of the leg, if I measure the size of the leg and then turn it sideways, it's about the same size as the body. So I need to make sure that my leg is at least this length, which is the size of the body. So if I take this length and turn it, that's about where my foot needs to be is down here. So that's a good rule of thumb. You can also kind of assess where at in the arch of the back the foot needs to go. So I, need to, I know that my foot needs to go about right here. So what I was just doing is first draw the thigh. Here we can actually see the curve of the thigh making kind of an ovally shape. So I'm just going to take the back of the thigh like this. Then I'm just going to draw a slight ovally shape like this. It's looking kind of like a weasel right now, which I think looks pretty cool. All right, so slight oval for the back of the leg. You can erase the inside of the thigh, of course, if you want to. I usually like to erase as I go, uh, depending on what I'm doing, just so that, it, so that it helps make it a little less confusing later. All right, now for this part, what I would suggest doing is we're going to start right here in the thigh on the inside of the body. We're going to do a slight parenthesis until we get down past the belly, and then we're going to change it to being a slightly flat line. So I'm going to start right about here in the body. I'm going to do a slight parenthesis, go down a little bit further than what the actual leg goes. And then once I get close to this dot that I've drawn here, I'm going to do a slight parenthesis this way. Then I'm going to allow it to go out flat until it gets close to reaching that dot. Now here we can see the toes. We have a uh, curve here so I can see one, two, three toes. I don't see the fourth one because we're seeing it from side view. So what I would suggest doing is just draw a parenthesis. So there's one toe. There's two toe, and then of course the third toe is very small because we're only seeing a tiny part of it. And all I'm doing is I'm just drawing parentheses touching each other. Now for the back of that leg, we're just gonna follow that with kind of a parallel line with what we have drawn now until we get across from the ankle. And then we're gonna switch it to being a parenthesis that's gonna connect back to the back side of the tiger. So we're gonna start with that parallel line like this. Once we get across from that ankle area, I'm gonna switch it. I'm gonna start doing a curve up. And then my goal is to make there be an indention whenever it comes back to the thigh. So I wanna make sure that this part right here does indent. If that looks straight or flat, feel free to make the back of the thigh stick out more or scoot the leg forward a little bit, but you definitely wanna have a slight indent in this area so that it makes more sense for the leg itself to uh, function. All right, then you can get rid of the inside pieces. Uh, you can get rid of the top of the thigh, but do keep the side of the thigh because we can, oops, <laughs> we can see that right here on the inside of the body. All right, something that I like to add just as a detail that's optional, I like to add the little bitty um, weird thing. If you have pets at home, you can kind of see it on their back legs. Sometimes they'll have that weird little indention thing. All right, so now that I have that back leg done, I'm gonna go ahead and do this front leg because that's the next thing that's closest to us. So something that I see pretty easily right here is I can see that this is the front of the shoulder and then it goes all the way back here. And then of course it goes down kind of like a lightning bolt effect. So it's kind of make it stretch out Z. So I'm going to start with drawing a slight parenthesis up here to indicate the back of the or the front of the shoulder. And then once I get to a part where I think I'm pretty satisfied with it, like if I measure it over here, it's a little bit higher than this foot. So you make sure that this is a higher level than this foot is. And then once you get to where you're satisfied with it, what I would suggest doing is do a slight curve, go down at a diagonal line until you get across ish from this foot here. And then once you reach that, we want to make the actual paw itself go down below this ankle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna curve that until I get close to the ankle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start doing my toes. I can see that this toe, it looks like this toe is growing out of the previous foot. So I'm just gonna do one, two, three, and I can see four toes. So I'm gonna start on that ankle or pretty close to it. I'm gonna do one parenthesis, start on the tip of it, do another parenthesis, do it one more time. And then of course this one's gonna be super, super thin because we can barely see it. And that should be long enough to connect to your paw. If that doesn't connect, feel free to move things around until you do get that connection. All right, now the last thing for this leg is we can see that coming from the tip of this toe, we're just gonna go up fairly straight, a slight diagonal. And then once we hit the belly a little bit higher up than the belly, because this right here is the belly. Once we go a little bit higher up than the belly, we're gonna add a slight curve for the back of the shoulder area. So starting around this toe area, we're gonna do a slight parenthesis, go in the body a little bit, and then we're gonna do a slightly opposite parenthesis. Now, look at it before you move on. This looks way too wide for my picture, so that means that I might have made my body a little long. It's always better to kind of fix it at this stage, so I'm just gonna look at my legs, and I'm gonna make mine a slightly more angled leg, 
so that it fits more with the actual picture instead of looking awkward and odd. So feel free to change up the angles until you get it to match perfectly. Um, so you may not um, do the measurements accurate. If that's the case, then you might have to do what I'm doing here and just uh, tweak it until you think that it looks accurate. Once you think that it looks a little bit more accurate, then you can stop um, kind of like arranging your shapes and stuff. But you do want to make sure that you do have a, a pretty good size curve for this. So the shoulder muscle is very, very large. So make sure that you don't make that too skinny. So really do make sure that you are paying attention to how wide or how thick you need to make certain parts of that animal. All right. So now I'm pretty satisfied with this because we do have a very thick upper arm and we do have kind of a thinner uh, slender lower arm. So once you're satisfied with the uh, tweaking of the animal, then you can move on to the next arm. So here I'm pretty satisfied with how this has turned out. Um, if you want to add, there's a slight crease right here that's below that foot. If you want to add a little bit of a crease that can kind of help separate out that leg from that foot. All right, moving on, here we go. So I do see that the belly does drop down. I, I mistaken this as the bottom of the belly. This is the bottom of the belly, a little bit lower. So I'm going to lower this belly line. So I'm just gonna do a frown. A good rule of thumb, follow this line right here and make sure that that would connect very naturally. You don't wanna have like way down here if your neck is up here because to make sure that that does flow pretty naturally. So now I'm pretty satisfied with this. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to this leg now. Here we can see right next, this is the, where we had that previous shoulder. Right below that, we can have this shoulder coming out in a very, very long stretched out parenthesis. So I'm just gonna start about where I stopped my previous shoulder. I'm gonna do a very long exaggerated parenthesis until it gets below this foot. So if I look and see the comparison, this foot is uh, quite a bit lower than the other foot. So make sure that you do in fact curve that down quite a bit more. You don't want it like super, super long, but you do wanna be uh, noticeably longer than the other part. All right, so I'm gonna move my book down so we can see better. All right, so now for this paw, um, this is the dew claw. So that we have a little bit of a smaller paw part right here, and then we can see one, two toes. The other two are hidden on the other side or possibly pushed down into that grass. So what I would suggest doing is start a little bit on the inside of the leg, and then what I would do is I would do a slight parenthesis like this for that first toe, and then do another parenthesis for that second toe. Now the reason they're pushed up like this is it's putting literally all of its weight on that foot. So that's why the toes are a little bit more scrunched rather than relaxed. All right, so make sure that the bottom of the foot has some space. So go flat a little bit. And after you've gone flat for a little bit, then you can start curving up. Don't forget to add a slight parenthesis or smile for the dew claw like this. And it's, the dew claw should be higher up than the other toes. So don't make your dew claw too far down. Otherwise you might mistake it for the other toes. All right, and then all you have to do is just continue it up. It might touch this leg, or if this part would look too big, then you can uh, curve it in until it touches the body. But for mine, if I made it too uh, inwards, that would look too skinny. So I'm just going to allow mine to touch the knee area or whatever that is of the other leg, and then I'm just going to allow it to stop. All right, so we're almost done with our legs. We have one more leg over here. We can see the back of the uh, ankle area right here, and then we can see the uh, toe pads up here. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a slight parenthesis on the inside of this area where we had the inside of the leg. And then I'm just going to kind of pretend that I'm naturally following it down, going forward, and then I would have my foot in this area. And I'm just gonna indicate that foot with a slight parenthesis. So make sure that it does feel like it could flow. So if it helps, you can very lightly draw that other leg back here. So you don't wanna have like this part be like way up here because that wouldn't flow naturally. So make sure that you do uh, try to make it make sense. All right. So now that I know that this is where I'm going to put my toe, uh, my toe pad, I'm going to do a slight parenthesis like this. Now I do see it's very, very dark, so it's hard, but I do see some of the toe pads or the, um, I call them toe beans. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw like little ovals. I can only see two of them. So I see one, two, and then I see a slight indication of the bottom of the paw pad. So I'm going to draw a slight oval here. You can draw a slight indention at the top to show the separation of the toes if that helps you uh, make it feel more comfortable. All right, so we are almost done with the uh, just drawing aspect and then all we have to left to do really is the stripes. All right, so for the tail, this tail, um, they use their tails for balance when they're running and climbing and stuff. So that's why it has a little bit of a wonky line to it. Feel free to change the position. You can make the tail curve under if you want to or you can have it curving out. I do like the position of this tail, so I'm gonna keep it. So follow the extension of the spine and then once you get to where it starts curving down for the back of the thigh, just go ahead and do a slight smile and then a slight frown. 
like this. Um, a good measure of thumb is if you measure the, oops, hello there, tiger, <laughs> is if you measure the length of the tail, it should be at least the length of half the body, if not a little bit more. So make sure that you're drawing your tail long enough. Um, you can draw it longer or shorter if you want, because this is art, you can do whatever you want. But um, once you're satisfied with the length, all you're going to do is you're just going to do a slight parenthesis like this to cap off the tail. And then you're just going to follow it back to the body. Now, tigers do have slightly thicker tails, so don't make it super, super thin. Um, but you can make it a little bit thicker if you want to. Oh, something that I noticed, a cool detail about this tail. We can see that the tail is actually flicking forwards like this, so it overlaps itself. So if you want to do that, all you have to do is just continue this up like this. And then do a slight frown, but stop before you touch the inside of the tail. And I'll add a pretty cool looking overlap so that the tail seems a little bit more interesting. So I like that, so I'm going to keep that. All right, so now that I'm done with the initial drawing, um, now um, the anatomy of like panthers and stuff are a little bit different and jaguars, but um, I think that like if you get rid of some of this extra fluff and you change up a couple things, you could easily turn this into a panther or a cougar. But since we're going for a tiger, I'm going to go ahead and add my stripes. Now um, on this part, if you want to add your own stripes and do whatever you want to, you can. Uh, really pay attention that there is a certain direction that some of these stripes go in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on the face first. I'm going to draw the spots first. So usually there's like some spots around the eyes, um, especially around like the eyebrow areas and around the corners of the eye. So all I'm doing is I'm just kind of using my pencil to kind of fill in little ovally shapes. Uh, very important, don't make them super perfect. If you make them too perfect, it may not quite uh, feel uh, natural unless you are going for more of a cartoony aesthetic. I'm adding the little dots on their cheeks where they have whiskers. If you would like to draw some whiskers, they're pretty fun to draw. Oh, they are just as frowny faces. And then they do have pretty distinctively, they have really, really dark lips down here. So what I'm doing is I'm just using my pencil and kind of filling in the bottom area of their mouth to make it seem as though it's almost open. And then around the face. Okay, so if you follow, see the jawline that goes down like this, notice that the stripes also follow the same angle as that jaw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the outer line first. And notice that it's not perfect. It's a little bit wonky. So I'm going to add a slight wonk. Now, when I'm drawing these stripes, if you'll notice, I'm going like this. When I'm drawing the stripes, I'm not drawing them smooth like this. The reason I'm doing that is because their stripes are made of fur. So if you look at it really carefully, you can see that it's kind of rough and fluffy on the edges. It's not perfectly smooth. So that's why I'm doing that, which of course, if you're going for more of a cartoony aesthetic, you can do it smoother and that's totally fine. That's kind of up to you. So here I've drawn it in the direction the jaw goes. And then I can see that there's one more that also follows that same pattern that's kind of outlining the jaw. And then up here on the forehead, I see that they make kind of like V shapes like this. And that's just kind of outlining the top of the forehead area. All right, so that's pretty much it on the face part. You can add a couple more stripes um, in between the brows and more on the opposite side of the head if you can see them. Um, this part right here usually stays pretty clear. If you want to go ahead and draw out the markings for the uh, white parts, you can. What I do is I'd very lightly draw it. And especially like right below their eyes, they have kind of like what lions do is they have that like white eyeliner below it, which I think looks super cool. And then I'm just going to do a slight outline around here. So that way, whenever I shade, I know where to stop my shadows. All right. Now on the body, their stripes do go in a certain direction. If you'll notice, they kind of like curve down the body. And then whenever it gets to the leg, it kind of curves into the inside of the leg like this. So really pay attention to that as you're adding these stripes. Now I'm just going to make the stripes kind of random. I'm not going to follow it uh, super precise. So I'm just going to do like little wiggly lines. They're just kind of following the direction closely, but not like exact with some of these parts. And um, you can add like the uh, like however many stripes you want. Some stripes make like weird shapes. So if you want to add like weird shapes in your stripes, feel free to. And um, some of them, I've seen like uh, some tigers that have like uh, almost heart-like shapes, which looks pretty cool. So, and you can add more stripes than what this particular tiger has. If you want to add fewer stripes, you can. So that's entirely up to you how many stripes you would like on your tiger. Uh, I'm going to add a couple more here. Um, something I noticed is that my tiger's a little bit skinny here, so I'm going to go ahead and increase the backside just a little bit. You don't have to do that. That's just something that I want to do because otherwise it might have seemed a little bit too young, and I would like to go for a slightly older tiger. But um, uh, yeah, all right, so just following the curves of the back like this. And of course, they have some that come up from their belly, which I think looks really cool. Um, I really like uh, seeing uh, like cats that have stripes and stuff. I think they look really, really cool. And um, uh, I have a pet cat that has a bunch of stripes on him and he looks really cool. He also has like dots and stuff. So he looks really weird. Um, you can see, notice some of these are like broken straps, uh, straps, <laughs> broken stripes. So some of them you'll just see like really, really short segments of stripes. They won't be fully connected. So it's kind of up to you if you want to have all of them 
like full on stripe stripes or if you want to have some of them kind of segmented or broken and that might add a little bit more interest. I do like right here, there's like a V-shaped stripe, which I think looks pretty cool. And that's kind of emphasizing the look of the leg. So some of those, um, I would definitely kind of use some reference, just kind of get an idea of what the stripes would look like. And you don't have to follow them to a T, of course. You can change them up a little bit. You can even add stripes in places that there's not stripes. On the tail, uh, tail something pretty distinct. The tip of the tail is almost always solid black. So I'm gonna darken the tip of that tail. And then it has like rings around the tail, which I think look pretty interesting. I think that's a cool um, kind of design element for tigers. All right. And then um, something else is that usually like around their feet, there's a little bit of black around their feet or it's a little bit of white. For this one right here, it has a little bit of black here, but this one has white toes. So you can add a little bit of black or white around their ears is also black here. All right, so I'm pretty satisfied with the uh, number of stripes on here that I have. You can definitely add more. You can add uh, smaller stripes or bigger stripes. And um, all I'm gonna do left is I'm just going to go ahead and do some of those white markings. The inner part of their thighs and their uh, belly are usually white. And um, also sometimes the tip of their toes are white. So it kind of depends on which tiger that you're drawing. We're just, I'm just gonna mark those out so that now I can do a little bit of my shading. Uh, you don't have to shade it. Definitely feel free to color it instead if you would like. Um, I actually went to a school that our mascot was uh, Green Tigers, which I thought looked pretty cool. Um, very random, I guess, but I don't know. They looked pretty interesting. So here I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, soft shading. And if you'll notice, I'm holding my pencil like this. That just helps it uh, create a very soft value. And uh, of course, if you want to do uh, colors and stuff, if you want to use like color pencils or markers or crowns or whatever, definitely feel free to go for that because I think that would look pretty cool, especially depending on what colors that you pick uh, in order to color your thing. All right, so now that I have my initial base of the shading done, or not really the shading, but just the color markings, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna darken in some areas just to kind of emphasize some of these uh, parts that I want the muscles to stand out of, or if I want there to be a little bit more overlap. Even if the color itself wouldn't naturally be darker, I'm gonna darken it, especially this leg that's in the very, very back so that I can tell that there was in fact a leg back there. So some of these parts, even if it's not supposed to be like technically dark, um, you can darken it up. And of course, as always, you can use your eraser to help bring back some of those dark areas if you went a little too far or if you just want to lighten them up. All right, so um, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I can go back and add a little bit more detail later, but I think for as, uh, today's drawing, I think that this works out pretty good. All right, um, I hope you guys had fun drawing a tiger and I would love to see your results. So I hope you had fun and have a good day.